Happy Children's Day to you all. You're welcome to the SKS Story Time. I'm so glad to be with you today. My name is Efe Famire. I'm the author of Folk Tales Are Forever, and you're all welcome to a Folk Tales Are Forever edutainment experience. We're going to have book reading, storytelling, singing, dancing, and music. Again, happy Children's Day, and welcome to a very fun and most memorable experience. <laughs> Okay, let's start. We start by welcoming you. Um, these are our folk tales are forever Wazobia mascots. And when you look at them, you should be able to tell what they represent. So I'll give you just one second. What do you think they represent? Hmm. Did you say Nigeria's three major ethnic groups? If you did, you're absolutely correct. And you can give yourself a star. So this here is Wasibi and he represents the people of the did you say Yoruba culture? Correct. Another star. And then this is Zonan. He represents the people from the did you say Hausa? Absolutely correct. Another star. And then this is Bia -e Bia, and he represents the if you said the Igbos, you are correct again. And there you have another star. And they are all saying, welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, let's see. They have different things on them that really tell us exactly where they're from. Can you identify those things? How did you tell? Hats, correct. Another star. Musical instruments, correct. Another star. OK, now. Do you know what that hat is called? That's a little tough, but try, you can ask. Okay, it's called the Abeti Aja, okay? And the instrument is called the Gong Gong. It's the talking drum, and it's gonna to speak to us. This one right behind me will speak to us shortly. This hat here, do you know what it's called? Okay, it's called the Hulanzana. And the instrument is called the kakaki. If you got those right, give yourself stars, 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 making four stars, two more stars to go. This right here, that hat, did you say oku agu? You are correct, another star. And that instrument there, Ogene, another star. That is so great. So now, did I say that drum was going to speak? We have a gorgon right here, and it's going to say, Happy Children's Day! Let's hear it. Again. One more time. Happy Children's Day to you all, and a warm welcome again. Oh, yes. They like to sing great. So we're going to sing, and they're going to sing in the languages that they speak, okay? So if you're not Yoruba or Hausa or Igbo, when we're done, we're just going to give you one minute to sing from the language of your own culture or any other language. If you're French, you're Spanish, whatever language you speak, then you sing like that. But the Yoruba people, to say welcome, do you know what they say? Ekabo, correct. Yet another star if you got that. The Hausa say, Sanudazua. Correct, if you got that. Another star. And then the Igbo say, No. Good, 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 good. So we're going to sing and welcome ourselves, or they are going to welcome us. And then if you're with your family, your friends, or parents, sisters, brothers, you can sing along and we can welcome one another. Are we ready? Are we ready? Go side to side. A cabo ma, a cabo sa. That's your by speak. That's your by speak. That's your bad, that's your bad, speak. 
Sanu de Zuwa, Sanu de Zuwa, that's how I speak, that's how I speak. Sanu de Zuwa, Sanu de Zuwa, that's how that's how I speak. One more time, whatever language you speak, sing along. Whatever language it is you speak, just sing. Sing welcome in your language. I say what language you speak. Good. Good. You're welcome, everybody. And again, happy Children's Day to you all. Welcome. Now, you know one thing I love about books? Books take us anywhere we want to go. And I wrote this book first for my children and for children all over the world to enjoy. So today we're going to go to the animal kingdom. Okay, so I'm going to need you to use your imagination to go to the animal kingdom at a time when animals could speak, you know, and animals could dance and animals could talk. Are you ready? I told you we have how many stories? Two stories, so sit put, enjoy yourself, and don't leave until you have listened to both stories, okay? But there's something special we like to do to get ourselves really excited about our stories. So I will say story, story, and you respond story. When I say once upon a time, you will say time, time. Are you ready? And then I would say drum roll, and then we're going to do this, right? We we'll clap our hands on our laps and then I'll do this. We stop at the same time. It gives a really wow effect. And then I tell you the title of our story. Are you ready? Story, story. Louder now. Story, story. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Drum roll. Ah. How Lion became the king of the jungle. A long time ago, the animals had no king. They lived together as equals and the animals went about their activities without a leader. Some animals who were particularly skillful or big or strong were respected and consulted when help was needed. Elephant was one of these animals. He was revered for his formidable size. Trees shook when he walked, the ground quaked when he danced, and when he blew through his trunk, birds scattered from the trees. No animal compared to elephant in stature and stance, and elephant knew this. One day, after thinking about it for a while, elephant decided that he might as well become king. I am bigger than all of you, said Elephant to the other animals. I am stronger and I can do anything I want. I hereby demand that you crown me king over all of you. The animals were not pleased, but Elephant was truly bigger and stronger than them all. So they said nothing. My coronation ceremony shall hold in seven days continued elephant and preparations must start now late at night some of the animals met secretly to discuss what they would do about elephant we all know we can't make elephant king of ours whispered tiger even without being our king he's already taking advantage of weaker animals it will only get worse if we make him king I agree, whispered dog. Elephant is not compassionate. He can't be our king. I agree too, said parrot. Elephant is not patient. He can't be our king. He's selfish too, said monkey. He can't be our king. Once, he asked me to harvest all the bananas on his farm. And when I took them to him, he didn't offer me any. I worked so hard for him and was not rewarded. But if we can't have Elephant as king, said Tiger, we must have another who can protect us. 
an animal equally strong, but with all the good qualities elephant lacks. Slowly, their eyes turn to lion. Yes, lion has all the qualities, said Owl. I agree, said Cock. Lion should be our king, said Chimpanzee. The animals nodded in agreement. We shall crown Lion King. Lion nodded. I humbly accept this honor, he said, and I promise to be a worthy king. Then the animals made a plan on how they would go about crowning Lion instead of Elephant. I suggest we keep this plan discreet and ensure that Elephant does not get wind of it, said Owl. The next day, the animals began making preparations for the coronation ceremony as Elephant had ordered. They trimmed the trees, leveled the grass and cleared the grounds. They built a huge and beautiful throne. They worked very hard for six days. Elephant often came to inspect their work and he would yell, This is not right! Correct this! This is not good enough for me! The animals became even more disappointed in him. On the coronation day, dressed in his best attire, Elephant led the animals in a dance around the jungle. As they danced, Elephant asked the animals to sing. Ao Mary Joba Ao Mary Joba is Yoruba. It means we shall crown Elephant as king. Eweku Ewele just adds rhythm to the music. It makes it sound really nice. So it's a call and response. When I say, Ao Mary Joba, you respond, Eweku Ewele. You want to try that? Ao Mary Joba, Eweku Ewele. Did you get that? Again. Ao Mary Joba, Eweku Ewele. Bravo! So, at this time, I'm going to teach you what I call the two-step dance so we can sing and dance together. Are you ready? Okay, let's do this on our feet. Okay, two steps to your left, then two steps to your right. Easy. Now, one, two. One, two. Did you get that? Very easy, right? One more try. One, two. One, two. Are you ready to sing? Do you remember what you're going to sing back to me? Eweku ewele? Correct. Let's have the talking drum. Back to our story and see what happens next. As the animals sang, Elephant danced proudly towards his throne. The animals had laid a beautiful spread of palm fronds before the throne. Closer and closer to the throne, Elephant danced. When Elephant took the last step towards the throne, the palm fronds gave way under his weight and he fell into a pit with a loud crash. The animals gathered around the pit and watched Elephant struggling to get out. But the pit was so deep that Elephant would be unable to get out without their help. Elephant soon grew tired and began to plead for their help. We don't want you as our king, the animal said down to him. We have chosen Lion to be our king and will not help you out of this pit until you agree to accept him as your king. Finally exhausted, Elephant agreed to accept Lion as king and the animals helped him out. 
Oh, hail the king of the jungle, the animals chorused as lion took to his throne. Elephant and the other animals bowed to him. Lion roared in response and the entire jungle shook. Oh, hail the king of the jungle, the animals chorused again. The end. Thank you for listening. Did you enjoy that story? Oh, I bet you learned some new lessons and some new words too. Do you want to share, share them with me? Or anyone else around you? Go ahead. You know, I don't really like to tell children what I think they learned from the lessons. I like to hear back from my friends because you always teach me new things. So share with your mom, your dad, sister, brother, friend, anybody, anything new you learned from this story. And if you learned any new words, why don't you look those words up in the dictionary so that you can use them some other time yourself. But with this story, there's one word I always try to ask children to figure out. Elephant was A. It starts with B. Did you say bully? Oh, absolutely. Elephant was a bully. And no one likes bullies. And no one likes to be bullied either. And so we have to be brave so we make sure we're not bullied. So we're going to say some things together, okay? Using the word bully. I am not a bully. I will not be bullied. And we say no to bullying. Good job. Thank you again for joining the SKS Storytime. Don't go anywhere. There's another story coming your way soon. Welcome back to SKS Storytime. Did you enjoy the first story? Oh, yes, you did. Okay, are you ready for the second story? Now, this story takes us to a distant village far up the northern hills. Are you ready? Again, we're going to start story, story, story. And once upon a time, 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 we do our drum roll and then I introduce you to the story. Are you ready? Are you ready? Story, story. Story, story. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. Drum roll. The talking tree. Many years ago, in a distant village far up the northern hills, there lived a boy named Aldo. Aldo loved to play pranks on people. He loved to hide in the bush and startle people when they went by. Sometimes, while he played with his friends, he would start screaming, Snake! Snake! Or, Scorpion! Big Scorpion! And everyone would run away in fright, while he would reel around in laughter. Alto didn't play pranks only on his peers. Sometimes, he played the pranks on adults and even on his parents at home. He would scream for fire when there was no fire. He would scream out in pain when he was not hurt. And when he'd get all the attention, he would laugh and laugh till tears rolled down his face. His parents had warned him about this habit. Many of the adults had told him to be careful, or one day he would call for help and no one would answer because they would think it was another one of his pranks. Everyone told him that his pranks could get someone hurt or even get him in trouble, but Aldo would not listen. One Hamatan evening, Aldo was walking leisurely down a bush path, chewing on a date palm, when he noticed a tree with a big hole in its trunk. He stepped closer to inspect the tree and found that the trunk was hollow. 
it was a very big baobab tree. And the hollow, as Aldo found, was as big as a house. Aldo became excited. Hmm, this will make a good hiding place, he said as he climbed in through the hole. He was looking around inside the tree, happy at his find, when he heard footsteps coming from the bush path. Aldo suddenly had one of his prank ideas. The footsteps belonged to a woman who seemed to be coming from the market with her basket of fruits. When she was close enough, Aldo bellowed out from the tree, Trader! Trader with a basket of fruit! Come here! The woman was so startled that the basket she balanced on her head almost fell off. She stopped and looked around her to see who had called. But there was no one behind her or in the bushes beside her. Trader with a basket of fruits! It is I, the tree, beckoning on you! Huh? The tree is talking! The tree is talking! yelled the woman as she dropped the basket of fruits and fled. A farmer was next. Farmer! Farmer with a hoe and cutlass, come here! The farmer was so startled that the hoe he balanced on his shoulder almost fell off. He stopped and looked around to see who had called, but there was no one behind him or in the bushes beside him. Farmer with the hoe and cutlass, it is I, the tree, beckoning on you. The tree is talking, the tree is talking, yelled the young farmer as he dropped his hoe and cutlass and fled. A hunter was next. Hunter with the animal hide, come here. The hunter was so startled that the hide he balanced on his head almost fell off. He stopped and looked around him to see who had called, but there was no one behind him or in the bushes beside him. Hunter with the animal hide! It is I, the tree, beckoning on you! The tree is talking! The tree is talking! yelled the hunter, and he dropped the animal hide and fled. A milkmaid was next. Milkmaid with a calabash, come here! The milkmaid was so startled that the calabash she had balanced on her head almost fell off. She stopped and looked around to see who had called. But was there anyone behind her? No, there wasn't. Was there anyone in the bushes beside her? Not at all. Milkmaid with a calabash! It is I, the tree, beckoning on you! Oh, the tree is talking! The tree is talking! yelled the milkmaid as she dropped her calabash and fled. Each time, Aldo had a good laugh as the people fled in fright. The people gathered in the distance and whispered about the mysterious talking tree. No one dared get close. Um, you're a strong man, said one woman to a well-built man. Uh, surely you can find out what the tree wants. <laughs> this has nothing to do with physical strength, the man replied. <laughs> Something very evil has come to our village. I suggest we go home and shut ourselves in. When Aldo was sure no one was in sight, he climbed out of the tree, laughing. <laughs> he picked up some of the fruits the trader had dropped on the ground and went home. The mysterious talking tree became the terror of the village. Everyone was talking about it. Ah, that tree is very powerful, someone said. Do you know it called my neighbor by name? Ah. When the talking tree beckoned on me, I ran faster than a horse, another person said. Hmm, do you know it can see as far as the next village, someone else said. Whenever Aldo heard people talking in hushed tones about the mysterious talking tree, he would secretly laugh, <laughs> laugh. Ah, that prank is my best yet. I must do it again soon. And soon enough, Aldo was back in the tree calling out to people as they walked by. This time, he made the tree scarier. From inside the trunk, he would growl and make strange noises. He told a little girl he would eat her and that he would swallow up the whole village. Every day, 
how do stole in and out of the tree and frightened people so much that they could no longer go about their daily activities. One day, the villagers could take it no more. They huddled together to discuss what they would do about the tree. This tree can't make us live in fear, said the farmer. We must do something about it before it swallows us up and wipes out our village, said the milkmaid. Well, let's cut down the tree, suggested the hunter. Let's cut down the tree, suggested the hunter. Yes, let's burn it up, another man added. Chants of, cut the tree, burn it up. Cut the tree, burn it up. Join in, cut the tree, burn it up. I can't hear you louder. Cut the tree, burn it up. Cut the tree, burn it up. Echoed through the village. Aldo was inside the tree when the people bearing matchets and fire surrounded it. Aldo couldn't climb out without being seen. He knew he was in trouble. When the first flame was thrown at the foot of the tree, Aldo cried out, Wait, please don't hurt me! But the people did not stop. They wanted the tree to stop talking. They threw more fire at the tree, and soon it was smoking with flames leaping all around it. Aldo kept screaming and crying and pleading with the people, Please stop! Please stop! It's me, Aldo! It's been me all along! Please stop! He was waving his arms from the tree hollow, but the people couldn't see him through the smoke. At last, through the crackling fire, Aldo's mother recognized the voice as Aldo's. At the instant, everyone heard the voice crying, It's me, Aldo! It's been me all along! Please stop! The people paused and listened. And sure enough, the voice from the tree was that of a boy. As they looked closer, they could see his little arms waving from the hollow in the tree. Aldo's mother began to wail. The women sobbed along with her, and the men rushed to douse the flames around the tree so they could get him out. When Aldo was finally pulled out of the tree, he had inhaled so much smoke and was unconscious. After a while, Aldo woke up and began to cry and plead with the people to forgive him. But the people were very angry. So, it was all a prank? All these days you were the voice in that tree, scaring everyone and forcing us to remain indoors? And this is not your first offense. You've been warned about your behavior many times. Aldo, how could you do this to our village? His father scolded, reaching to hold up his sobbing wife. The villagers were very angry and disappointed in Aldo. Some of them even blamed his parents for not being able to stop him from playing pranks. They decided that Aldo must leave the village and never return. He will not do it again, sobbed his mother. He's only a boy. He has learned his lesson. Well, how can we protect ourselves from danger when we can't tell if it's truly danger or another prank from Aldo? The villagers responded. Your entire family must leave the village. Aldo pleaded and apologized. His parents pleaded with him. But the villagers had had enough of Aldo and his pranks. And so Aldo and his parents were banished from the village. The end. Did you enjoy that story? It gave you some things to think about, right? What did you learn? Did you learn any new lessons? Any new words? Why don't you share them with your parents or your sister, your brother or your friend? In fact, just say right now what you learned from the story. Good. I don't like to tell children what I think they learn from each story because when I hear back from you, I learn new things from you too. So, interestingly, there's something going on right now. You know, the people thought there was a danger, right? Outside. 
So when something was dangerous outside, what did they do? You're right, they stayed at home. Are we staying at home right now too? We are. Why? COVID-19, you're correct. But that's not a prank. It's real. And the way we keep safe is by doing what? Staying at home. So what are you doing when you're home? I hope you're not too bored. Are you learning anything new? Are you learning a new skill? Maybe to bake, to cook, play a new instrument. Some people are having online school. How is that going? Are you reading books so that your imagination can take you anywhere you want to go? And even when you're at home, are there ways you can keep safe? What do you do to keep safe when you're at home? Tell me, let's talk about that. Right, washing our hands often. Do we know how to wash our hands? Do you? Okay, let's do it together. Did you know you wash your hands for about 30 seconds? And the way to time that is by singing the happy birthday song twice. So let me show you. Soap, hands under the tap, rub, wash this way, here, all together, here, here, thumbs, thumbs, here, and here. Rinse off, dry, and that lasts just 30 seconds, or singing happy birthday twice. What else can we do? When we cough, how do we cough or how do we sneeze? We dab. <coughs> Achoo. To destroy all bacteria. We dab. And we don't go out. We stay indoors. And if our parents are going out or the older people, what do they do? They wear their masks. Some people wear gloves. So whatever we can do to keep safe, let us do that. Again, happy Children's Day. Before we go, our Wazobia mascots like to say thank you in a special way. Who knows what thank you is in Yoruba language? Did I hear someone say Eshe? Correct. You get a star. Another star. In Hausa? Did somebody say Nagode? You're correct. Get yourself a star. In Igbo. Did I hear Dalu? Correct. Now give yourself another star. And do you know what we're going to do? Because it's Children's Day, so we're going to tell our parents, get, let, let your parents know for every star, you get a special Children's Day treat. Okay? Good. So we're going to sing and dance and thank you, appreciate you for spending time with us as the, at the SKS Story Time. Okay? Are we ready? Okay, let's get on our feet. So this is special, okay? Not only are we going to sing in the different languages, I'm going to show you the dance, okay? So we have, if you're in a family of boys and girls, boys on one side, girls on one side, it's a dance-off. Are we ready? So when we get to Eshe, the girls just pick up your pretty dresses like this and you just move, Eshe, Eshe, oh. Okay, the boys, you imagine you are wearing an agbada. You know what the men wear out? So you're just going to take your agbada like this. So go, eshe, eshe, oh. Did we get that? That's for Yoruba. Okay? When we get to the houses and we're saying, now go day, okay? The girls are going to imagine we're the Fulani. So you're going this way. Now go day, now go day, okay? The boys, imagine you are leading cattle and you have your stick and just holding it like this. Nago day, nago day. Did we get that? Okay, now for the Igbos. Dalu, the girls, you're going this way. Dalu, Dalu. Did you get that? Good. And the boys, look at this fan the Igbo men hold. So you just do that. You know, just be cool with your fan. Dalu, Dalu. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Girls, on one side, boys on one side, mommies and daddies, you no, know, mommies with the girls, daddies with the boys, we're having a dance off. Are we ready? Okay. And again, thank you so much for joining us. It's been the 
SKS story time on Children's Day. Have a wonderful, wonderful Children's Day. Do great things together. Oh yes, before I forget, something from our treasure chest of questions. Have you checked up on any of your friends lately since the lockdown began? You can call your friends today and just wish them happy Children's Day too and say, just going to check up on you that you're doing okay. Happy Children's Day to you. Happy Children's Day to me. Would you do that? Thank you. All right, Eshe, Nagode, Dalu. Let's have it. Ready? Eshe, oh, Eshe. Eshe, oh. Eshe, oh. Eshe, oh. Nagode. 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 Dalu. Dalu, 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 Eshe, oh, Eshe, Eshe, oh, Eshe, oh, Eshe, oh, Na go de, 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 Dalu, Dalu. Nagode, 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 Dalu, 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 Dalu. Thank you again and happy Children's Day.